All right, all right, party kids. Today we're going to talk about uh, playing stuff after hours and shorting parabolics. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. Let's talk about after hours action and parabolics. All right, first one we're going to talk about today is um, LFIN. I've been watching this one for a while, been waiting for a bounce on it, and it bounced yesterday and today, and I missed it. I missed the long plays on them. I knew it was going to be a good long play both times, but I, but I caught the shorts yesterday and today. Got out way too early. Um, yesterday... I shorted into this move right here. So you see the resistance from the previous day. I shorted into when you get just like we were talking about with the with the dip buy on the panic, you know, when you get a, an extreme move in a very short amount of very short amount of time, it's like a rubber band being expanded and you can expect some backlash, some retracement. So I used this previous day's resistance as my um, as my resistance zone and I shorted right into that yesterday right into there uh, I can't remember my exact entries and exits uh, I did not trade it perfectly um, I remember I covered into this I did not hold I did not catch this move right here so but that's okay I made some nice gains on it yesterday and then today uh, this morning I actually shorted it again um, I shorted it at uh, I shorted at ten at I think at I took partial size at I think at ten twelve and then um, I think I chased it actually it hit it hit the it hit it hit the high of like ten seventy and then right in here I got I started chasing it a bit so I got short I think at like ten fifteen ten sixteen right in here. So I kind of chased it on the way down, then I let it do its thing, and then when it started coming back on me, I had taken, I didn't take a full size, I only took partial size, and then whenever I, I wanted to test and see if this high of day was going to act as resistance, and it did. So uh, I remember once it got smacked down right there, and then it kept going, and then whenever it got pushed down right here, it, the high of day acted as resistance, I added in with full size right there um, and I held it I didn't hold it long enough I covered at 10 and then I waited for it to break down and I covered at VWAP the rest at in like the 970s 960s right in there um, and I could have held it for look at this I could have held it for a whole dollar a share move could have held it all the way down here to nine and I was long from like I think like it was like I got 1090 and like 1070 it was I got two really good entries right in here to make up for this bad one at like 1015 and I didn't hold it but I took some nice profits then I went about my day took a nap came back and then right as I'm getting back I noticed that um, that LFIN is getting halted it's still going right now as we speak um, it got halted twice um, one at 1190 so right right here and then it got halted again no 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 it got halted at 1120 at 1122 so I got halted at 1122 and then 1190 I didn't even see it till after the second halt and one thing about these halts is usually after the first time it halts if you buy it after the first time, most of the time you're good and it squeezes higher and you can take some profits. After the second halt though, you're usually playing with fire. So um, I actually tried to go after the second halt, I don't know why, but I tried to go long. I ended up taking a small loss on it because it was kind of choppy in here. So I just got out and then I decided, you know what, I'm going to try to short this thing. I don't think this... This this is such an extreme spike. It's I mean literally and went from nine fifty to to thirteen in just you know about a half an hour, 
that's a pretty extreme spike. It's got tons of overhead resistance from the long-term chart. So uh, I took a quarter size um, at 1235. Um, I took a quarter size at 1235. Then it spiked up, broke high a day so quick. I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't want to cut losses on on a on a push up through. I wanted to wait for a pullback. But once it couldn't get through this 13, I was like, wow, that's looking like a serious resistance. So I went ahead. It's pretty risky. I added in. Um, I added in two more times. Once at once at twelve sixty three and one at twelve ninety three. So I added in two more times right there. Um, it pulled back. I got some out at twelve. Held held right here through this little consolidation. So I, I covered half at twelve. Held. Uh, held through this little consolidation period and then boom into this drop I got a killer exit with the hot key at 11:30 let's see here so I got some out at so my exact exits were I got some out at 12 21 11.90 11.97 and the last one which was the best one at 11.32 I damn near bottom ticked it with the hot key right there and you can see right now it's still going. So right now it's consolidating. This thing could push back up through the highs and keep going. I mean, it's down so much off of its lows that, um, but I played it for what I wanted. I mean, I captured, you know, about a dollar fifty share off of it. Um, and so, so yeah, that was a nice way to close my day. Um, I'm kind of working in backwards. And then this morning I traded... What did I trade this morning was KCASI. And this one right here, uh, I started this trade in on yesterday. So if we look at the daily chart, if you look at the daily chart on this thing, this thing, uh, let's go to one year. This thing has been grinding up for a long time on kind of no volume though. So yesterday, it has the breakout. I missed the breakout. The breakout over five, I mean, buying that would be, I mean, that's a perfect picture, perfect breakout over five. Um, I missed that, but that's okay. Um, I missed it. So you got the breakout over five. Boom, right there. Breaks out over five. It pulls back. It tests. It holds this five. When it holds this five, you can buy in right there. And then boom. It ramps into the close. Perfect power hour move. Now, this right here, this has a pretty large float. So if you don't know or understand what the float is, that's just the amount of shares that are able to trade between the buyer that the public is allowed to trade. And when you have a smaller float, like like LFIN has a small float. So um, whenever you have high demand, it's, it, the stock squeezes higher, easier, and faster. And quicker whereas this one has a larger float so it takes more buyers and sellers to push the stock up so these are a little bit slower moving this has got a but the cool thing about the larger float stocks is it's easy to find shares to short so I shorted this baby a couple of times so let's so this right here went from what what it went from 413 or from the low fours yesterday all the way squeezing up to 642 that is a pretty that's that, that may not seem very big relative to like lfin but for this stock relative to how this stock has been trading in the past year that's a huge move look at this candle that's a huge 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 move so when you have a move that huge and it closes that strong and it closes that strong then this thing is going to be due for some pullback and some consolidation before it can go up again, right? Stocks don't just go straight up. So even though I even though I think this stock will probably keep going up because it has good news, but before it can do that, it has to it has to pull back, consolidate, hold its gains, and then move up. So I'm watching this thing into the close. I see it. It it goes up into the, it, it. It has a ramp, a nice parabolic spike into the close. And I'm watching it after hours because after hours, 
I'm thinking if this thing is gapping up after hours, I'm going to short into that gap. And you might be wondering, why are you going to short into that gap? Why would you do that? You know, I mean, if this thing's showing so much strength, why would you want to do that? Because, I mean, this thing could maybe gap up tomorrow and 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 squeeze you, potentially squeeze you. But what I've, what I've learned in the past is that when this thing had such a big move into the close and then a gap up after that into the after hours, all of these people that were buying into the close, the number of people that were buying into this close, look at this volume. See this volume down here? That's huge volume for this stock people buying into the close. Now, the people that are buying the stock after hours is not nearly as many, but it's pushing up the stock because it's the stock is very illiquid. So if you notice, you don't see hardly any volume. So all these people right here that bought that bought between in the in the low sixes, when they wake up the next morning and they look at their stock and they see that it's in the, that it's up in the sevens, the they're like, oh my gosh, I got almost a dollar a share. So all these people that were buying into the close, they become sellers the next day when the market opens because their stock is up so much. So what I did is after hours, I was shorting this in pieces. I shorted some at like six. I started shorting at 675, 695. I got some at seven. Then this morning, I was up super early. I missed this down here. I wanted to cover into this. I overslept like 20 minutes, and I, and I didn't get my cover into this, but it started bouncing. Um, I took some off, and then, and then I took some off, took a little bit of small profits, and then it squeezed up higher to the 720s, and I shorted more up here. I shorted up at like 710, 716, 707, and then as it was coming down, I covered, I covered into this right here, not all of it, most of it, and then to my surprise, it squeezed up higher. It squeezed up higher, I shorted more at seven. Now this is where I made a mistake, is that I took too big a size, which made me uncomfortable. So since I made took so much size, it made me uncomfortable. When this thing started coming down, coming into the market open, I ended up covering all of my shares because I was so scared that at the market open, if this thing were to spike up on me, that I'd be down so much money so quick, I didn't want to experience that, and I just took the profit. But if I would have had, if I would have just, if I would have kept like a normal size instead of like, I think I had like a, if I would have, whenever I covered most of my shares down here, I think I had like a ten or $12,000 position and then whenever I added in here, I had like a like a twenty three thousand dollar position, and then I just covered for like fifteen cents a profit. But if I would have just maybe covered half or three quarters and then waited for the market open, look at this flush. All of these buyers right here from the previous day into that ramp all became sellers because they woke up. They woke up and this thing closed at six thirty. They woke up and the market opened. It's opening up at almost seven dollars a share these people are like I'm taking my money and what do you know they did they took their money and I remember actually I did have a little bit left at the market open I remember covering into here I can look real quick find out exactly what I covered I covered at I covered let's see here I think I covered like in the at 75 and at like 50, but I didn't, I only had like a thousand shares left. So, nevertheless, I traded it bad. Uh, my thesis was dead on, but I traded it poorly. But I still made money on it, and then I traded it one more time today. So this thing, it came down. I actually thought about buying this too, um, but then I was like, nah, I already made enough money on it. It it went right here is whenever it broke it when it broke down through here, it went from uh it went from uh green to red. So that that kind of scared me, but it came back and I wasn't paying attention to it. And then and then I noticed that this thing made a nice U-shaped pattern. It put it in uh and it and it came back. And when it came back, um 
I actually shorted into high a day resistance right here. I shorted into high a day resistance right here. I think I got short at, I got short at 687 and I didn't cover. I should have covered right here. I had $200 in gains right there. I didn't show, co cover. I had I shorted 1000 shares. I didn't cover. It actually ended up coming back. I got squeezed. I actually ended up having to cover this whenever it broke 7. That was my risk. It broke seven. I covered, took a small loss on it, and then I watched it. I watched it, and this thing was just choppy. It was super choppy. It couldn't continue through to break through the high day. It tried several times, one, two, three times, and it couldn't even test the high of day. So right in here, I got short at 7.06. It had this huge drop-off. This is a reversal sign right here. I mean, when you get a sell-off that hard, you get it's a nice trend and break. A break in trend. I sold half my shares or covered half my shares right there. It came back and put in a lower high. It couldn't get through seven. I uh, re added to my position and then I covered some here at 767. 767. I covered some at like, at like 755 and then I held a quarter piece for this breakdown actually. I was looking for this breakdown. I had an order in at 7.42, but whenever this thing squeezed me, I told myself that it broke. if it broke this pivot point at at 6.70, that I was going to get out. And when it broke that pivot point, I waited for the pullback, and then I got out on the pullback in the, in the 6.60s. And then right after that, 10 minutes later, 5 minutes later, I look, and it breaks down. It hits my goal. But whatever. You can't trade it perfectly. I traded, I shorted this thing. A couple times, winners both times. Uh, today was a good day. Booked in some nice wins. Today, this week has been real good. It's uh, this week has been um, three day, three green days in a row. So uh, the market's been pretty good. We've had, a, even though the markets, we've the market's been getting, uh, it's been kind of weird and choppy and getting crushed one day and bouncing back the next day as far as like the spy and the overall markets. But small caps, there's been several plays going on and so uh yeah it's been nice anyways if you enjoyed the video leave some comments uh and don't forget to subscribe for more videos thanks